Hey everyone, welcome to the first ever Tech with KG podcast. I gotta say that this is a very exciting day. Uh, HDR10 Plus Gaming has been announced. Um, And, you know, that has been sort of a whisper for a while that I talked about, but this is official from Samsung saying they're working on the HDR10 Plus Gaming extension and they expect it to be in their TVs very, very soon. And what that tells me is 2022 for sure. Will they be backwards compatible with their older TVs? They didn't say. So I can't tell you if that's going to be the case, but there is hope that there is because all those TVs do have HDR10+. So let's see, what does HDR10 Plus Gaming do exactly? Well, if we're reading it off of the screen here, you can see that it is an automatic display calibration, instant source tone mappings, and flexible refresh rates up to 120 hertz. So they are really trying to go at Dolby Vision Gaming with this. Are they going to be successful at this? That remains to be seen. But here's one thing they do have going for them. As of right now, I would say that Dolby Vision Gaming is still really young. There's a lot of problems with it as well. I think Vincent Teo has shown off some of the examples that he's shown. And we haven't seen a game that was actually developed in Dolby Vision yet. So that remains to be seen. Is Halo Infinite going to be that first game? We don't know. Um, There's talk that it might not even be native Dolby Vision. So we'll see when the game actually drops. But HDR10 Plus gaming, that's exciting. And the reason why I find it exciting is because it is open source. And what that means is it's friendlier to game developers. So more game developers will be able to put HDR10 Plus in their game than Dolby Vision in their game because Dolby Vision, they have to pay a licensing fee. HDR10 Plus is free to implement. Moving on to the next thing they talked about is OpenPQ Plus metadata. And what this is, is the OpenPQ metadata is going to kind of be able to detect what game you're playing and set the settings based on the game that you're playing. So this is sort of like Game Optimizer, but it takes it one step further in automatically doing it for you, which is crazy, and I like that. Um, Game Optimizer is personally one of my favorite things that has been implemented this year. Even though you might not use it a lot, it's nice to have that option. And you can definitely set up different picture profiles based on the games that you play, which is something that I think this metadata from Samsung is going to do as well but they are trying to do it a little bit different. What they want to do is change a bunch of different parameters in your picture settings based on the game that you're playing. So for this example here, they have FPS as the game genre that the metadata detected and the picture setting was sharpness at 10, color vibrancy to 25, gamma zero, and black EQ to three. But they are only showing that the ones in blue are highlighted and the open metadata thing is highlighted in the same color of blue. So I'm wondering if that's only affecting those parameters, the color vibrancy and the black EQ. Now, I got to say, I have never heard of color vibrancy as a Samsung setting. So this could be something new. Also, black EQ, maybe this is like shadow detail and they just renamed it. This is something that also can be brand new to Samsung in 2022. This open PQ metadata, I think this will not be backwards compatible. I'm pretty sure that this is probably just going to be on Samsung 2022 TVs and beyond, but this is still very exciting stuff. Um, the example that they showed shows a soldier looking into a dark spaceship and not seeing the enemy, but on the open metadata, it is detecting, yeah, where we found the enemy. They're hiding in the shadows. Um, and so the picture quality itself is not being totally destroyed this way, um, but the game is just being adjusted. So you're not seeing a lot of Black Crush happening um, based on the game that you're playing. And this can happen. Games are definitely optimized and set up differently and you know you're always having to do different sliders but with this plus hdr 10 plus you can definitely have a game experience where you don't have to go in the settings and tinker around with everything so i think that's something that is going to help a lot of gamers out because i can't tell you how many times people have said kg i do not want to mess with game settings all the time i don't want to go into my picture settings every time i play a game i'm sick of going into the hdr setup menu I feel you. A lot of people share that same frustration and HDR10 Plus Gaming should fix that along with this open metadata and hopefully Dolby Vision Gaming for the people that have Dolby Vision Gaming capable TVs. 
and this is one thing that we kind of remain in the dark about with Dolby Vision Gaming because they don't talk about it. They don't talk about what Dolby Vision Gaming is actually capable of doing uh, because right now all it is doing is converting HDR10. That doesn't do anything for you. That does zero for you. That HDR10 doesn't already do. Um, so I think that if Dolby Vision Gaming does what it's supposed to do with dynamic metadata, setting it up for you without you having to worry about what clicks it needs to be at in the HDR menu, this is something that I'm hopeful for with this kind of technology. So who does it better? It remains to be seen. This is a really good development though for HDR10+. Plus. And I'm sad to say that anybody who was really ready for Dolby Vision to come to Samsung, I think this is pretty much the nail in the coffin that we're not going to get Dolby Vision anytime soon. Because in the video, they also talked about how HDR10 Plus is their uh, dynamic metadata for HDR of choice, and they're going to be pushing that. So they didn't say that Dolby Vision's not coming to Samsung, but they did not say it. And the way that they worded this with HDR10 Plus makes it sound like, yeah, Dolby Vision's not happening in 2022. And we all knew that was sort of a pipe dream anyway. So not anything to be really shocked or um, not anything to be really shocked about. Now, again, that's just me speculating and I have no confirmation that they're not bringing Dolby Vision, but I would say definitely uh, things are looking that way. So yeah, and the other thing they talked about really quickly is the cloud gaming. And they're talking about they're going to be bringing cloud gaming to Samsung TVs, whether they're going to hook up with Microsoft Xbox to do this with their cloud services or go with Amazon Luna or Google Stadia. Is that still around? I don't know. Uh, but they want to bring it. So if they're going to develop their own cloud gaming service, that would be interesting. Um, we'll see. One of the things they said they are working on extra controller support so you can use your favorite game controllers on the Samsung TV. So that's interesting. And we'll see what game controllers are supported. I'll go ahead and link this video in the description below. I do recommend checking it out. It is pretty interesting. They talk about other things as well that's coming to the Samsung TV platform. They talk about how they're using webcams differently. Um, they're trying to bring some AR stuff with webcams. Really interesting stuff. They also show some of the accessibility options they've been working on. They definitely lead the pack in that too, man. I'm telling you, they have 3D sign language that's going to appear on your screen. Like, that's crazy. So they're definitely helping out people that really need the accessibility options. So I have to take my hat off to Samsung for doing that. Uh, let me know what you guys thought. Did you guys enjoy this first episode of the Tech with KG podcast? I guess it's sort of just, you know, whenever I feel like doing a video, but I just really want to talk about something, I'm going to do it this way. And I uh, hope you guys do like this video and I hope it was at least somewhat not boring to watch so let me know in the comments did you enjoy this format what do you guys think about hdr 10 plus gaming and do you think that dolby vision is pretty much not coming to the samsung tvs because of this news let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you want to check out any of the tv reviews that i did this year you can see them right here thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you in the next one